Reef Bum is sponsored by Bulk Reef Supply and Ecotech Marine. Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. So in this video I'm going to talk about how both of my sumps overflowed not only once but twice and I'm going to talk about what I'm going to do to hopefully prevent that from happening again in the future. But before I do that, if you want to help support the channel and pick up some SPS frags, you can do so at reefbum.com. And with that, let's get into the video. Okay, so as I mentioned, I had two overflows for both of my sumps, which was certainly disheartening. I've been keeping reef tanks for about 30 years, and I can't ever recall having a flood in my any of my sump rooms or underneath my tank stands due to too much water being in those systems. I've always been very diligent and tested out my systems to make sure that when all the power is cut that there is not going to be uh, you know too much water we would overflow the uh, sump but that's exactly what happened in these two instances for both systems and I think what what went wrong here is that I lost power on my return pumps for a few hours and when I had tested that out originally when I designed both of these systems I probably didn't uh, you know wait for the uh, system to be you know out of power for that long so it's just I think what happened was eventually over the few hours enough water made its way through the overflow boxes of the display tanks of the frag tanks got into the sumps and they were afloat so yeah, I made a mistake in terms of not determining that cutoff point for the amount of water that should be in each system that wouldn't overflow the sumps. So that sucked, you know, I mean, twice to come in, I think it happened within, uh, twice within the same week. One time it happened a few hours after I got back from vacation and yeah, not fun when you're coming back from vacation and you see your sump room flooded out from not just one system, but both systems. Just <laughs> really, really sucked. So what happened is, and, and a lot of you folks that follow me know that I have a full house backup generator, which I do, and that did not fail, it worked. But we, we, uh, we had some power surges. So I'm not even sure if the um, we lost the power and the generator turned on. It might have just been power surges in both cases. I wasn't here, I, I couldn't, um, I can't pinpoint exactly what happened. I can only kind of piece together the, uh, the information I got. So how did the return pumps fail and everything else was running okay during these power surges? as well? I've got these um, GFCIs and I did another video on using GFCIs and how I wanted to add them to the system to help me from getting electrocuted from my fish tank. So I've got the GFCIs on that system, got GFCIs on this system, the Peninsula Tank System. So three different circuits for each system. These are audible GFCIs. So if the GFCI is tripped, then they will make an alarming sound and you could just simply hit the reset button. So yeah, I know there's folks out there that do not like to use GFCIs on their tanks because of that very thing that they could trip prematurely and I get it I understand it I just feel like I want to protect myself in case there is an electrical shock and have these GFCI so what happened was for each of these systems and these both of these instances the uh, GFCI with the return pump for each of the uh, return pumps they tripped and so the power for the return pump was cut off and everything else was running. I think, um, you know, another thing that potentially happened is this is my GHL doser 2.2 maxi, which I use for cockwasser dosing. And the way I had this one originally set up was I had both heads. One head was used to dose cockwasser to this system over here. And the other head right here was used to dose cockwasser to this system. So 
that's a design flaw in and itself because this doser is hooked into the Proflux for this particular system. So, yeah, if I lost power on this particular circuit for the return pump, but the maxi doser was, um, you know, continuing to go, then it would not only dose it to this sump, uh, but also, you know, to this sump. Uh. So, one thing that I did to correct that design flaw was to pick up a, another maxi doser to make sure that if you know this one um, if, if the return pump on this system tripped and was not running or if the entire system was not running you know then I, I would not want to have caulk caulk washer dosing to this system if this system still had electricity going through it so that was one thing that I um, did to prevent this from happening again in the uh, in the future. Another thing that I uh, have done is obviously I've lowered the water level in these sumps. So I was running the water at the top of this blue tape for this sump and I was running the water at the top of this blue tape for that sump. So now I've lowered the water level about an inch in each sump to help prevent the overflows in the uh, future. You know, it's it's a fine balance. For each of my two systems, I run two 100 watt <clears throat> return pumps. And the lower the water gets in the sump, the higher the likelihood is that those pumps are going to start cavitating, micro bubbles, all that sort of thing. So you want to kind of try to find that level in the uh, sump where it's going to be low enough where you're not going to have that overflow but where the pumps can't perform the way they're supposed to perform so that's that's always an issue but you know I'll be the first to admit that sometimes I have too much plumbed in to uh, my sumps I've got two frag tanks plumbed into this sump I've got a um, 60 gallon cryptic sump plumbed into that this sump as well so you know I, I would be the first to admit that I need a larger sump for at least this particular sump for this tank I've got just the uh, 50 gallon frag tank plumbed into this sump but that's kind of pushing it as well too so it, you know it's a balance and you got to kind of figure out where that balance is to run the system efficiently and without having problems like water overflowing over the sumps another thing that I have done is I have some baffles in these Royal Exclusive Dream Boxes. Kind of hard to, uh, to see in here. These are identical Dream Boxes, so I've got a baffle as well in that Dream Box. So I had the baffle raised a little bit to keep the water level in the skimming compartment higher and level, right? So by keeping that baffle up, the, uh, the water level would stay just dead on consistent, which would make skimming a lot more consistent. So one thing that I've also done is I've lowered the, um, the baffles a little bit more in each of these sumps to bring the, um, the water level down a little bit more. <clears throat> so that's, a, uh, that's another thing that I've done. A third thing that I have done is, so I mentioned that these audible GFCIs make an alarm sound. I've added a, um, and I want to add these devices to each of the six circuits that I have going on for the uh, two systems. This is called GFI Notify. I'll put a link in the video description below. It's a pretty cool little device. It's not terribly expensive. And I think it might be like 60 70 bucks for two of them i can't recall off the top of my head somewhere in that neighborhood but the cool thing about this device is that when it's plugged into a gfci circuit if it power is cut to that circuit i think it for at least six minutes i think that's the time frame not not if you get an um an on and off power surge it won't give you a notification but if the power is off for six minutes you will not only get an email, but you will also get a text message saying that there's been a power failure, 
which is really cool because if I'm on vacation I'm away from home and this happens I want to know about it a lot sooner than later right so if I'm not here to hit that reset button on the GFCI I want to be able to um, you know look at my cell phone see it and whoever is home I could just you know text them or call them and say hey listen can you check circuit number six right here it's telling me that there's been a been a trip so that's um that's something that I'm um, I think is is gonna certainly help me in the future in terms of those things it'll also notify you when the power comes back on one final change that I did make to the electrical setup is taking each of the return pumps off of their respective GFCI circuit so I know that's going to be a less safe scenario for me to have not have the return pumps on the GFCI on a GFCI circuit but when I'm working on those pumps in terms of pump maintenance I will just simply unplug them I understand that's not going protect, to protect me 100% but it should at least be uh, an improvement in terms of the safety issue for me so yeah if, if there is a premature tripping of a circuit the return pumps will not be on one of those circuits so that is a uh, the final fail safe that I've put into place and hopefully that will improve the odds of this not happening again so that's going to do it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Until next time, be safe and be well. Later.